Welcome back to another episode of Mars Day with Mark, your favorite astrology podcast. It is your host with the most, Fire Family, Mr. Mark David Meyer, with the fire, here to share ideas and take the collective vibration higher. My sole intention is to reconcile all paradox with love and truth, and I love you. And let this be for the best and highest good of all, and let this be really fun too. I hope you guys enjoy this video. So what this is, is the astrology breakdown of the week. And you may be new here. Welcome in if that's the case. And you might be returning. Welcome back. So basically what we're going to cover is, you know, the celestial events and how that might affect you as a person on Earth. So this is the astrology of the week, Tuesday to Tuesday, Mars Day with Mark. We've got May 28th is where we're starting off. And then the end of the week is going to be June 4th. And you know what's wild? Why do we do our week in the middle of the week, like Tuesday? We're almost a year into this series, guys. Can we get like a round of applause? I need the soundboard. <laughs> I bet uh, <laughs> I bet next year, when we're a week away from two years, we'll have these sound effects. I won't even have to pretend. You won't even have to imagine. We might even have a cake. So stay tuned for that, guys. The imagination is real. And we're willing it into existence. Why do we pick Tuesday, guys? Because every day matters. Tuesday is the day of intention. So what a better day than today to talk about the celestial events? Because they're always going to event. They're always going to move around. We could do this on, you know, M Mercury Day messages. Or we could do Jupiter Day Juice or Venus Day, uh, Venus Day Parade or Saturday. We could do whatever the fuck, you know. It doesn't have to be creative. Saturday work, you know, or uh, Sunday blessings, either in Moon Day magic. You get me? Yeah, all week. But basically, my name is Mark, so there is kind of a ring. But also, any day you refer back to the planets, life is going to be exactly what you make it, guys. And I've had a lot to think about over a year of doing this podcast. Like, most of the time, the transits that I'm looking at, say more about me than it does about the world. And any astrologer knows this. And you guys know this too while you're watching my videos. And if you watched any astrology video is that basically you can hear the language from another human, but you're going to have to filter that through your subjective experiences. And their information is an objective experience. Even when I tell you about the degrees and say this archetype means this archetype and blah, 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 fucking Virgo Capricorn earth the ass out of it. It's like it's still subjective. There's not a damn thing that you're going to perceive that hasn't been modified by you. And that's something to think about. So I'm excited to run through this video because I have no notes. I have nothing planned. Let this be unscripted. Let this be off the cuff. Let's do it live. Fuck it. Because I know what's up. And I just want to say, on the same train of thought conversation we are still having, it's vitally important that you guys understand that you are a star, quite literally, or figuratively, if you don't want to take it that far. As above, so below, so within, so without. So what that really means is that you can look to astrology as a form of pattern recognition and metaphysical interpolation on some level. So yeah, what's that good for? It's if I got to explain it, man, you don't know what the fuck I just said. The utility is endless. That's the point, guys. But ultimately, we're all looking at the same shit, but we're all different people. And that's the crazy thing is that we all come from different locations, different walks of life, different experiences shape us and mold us. So it's just vitally important that while you listen to this, and I'm going to do my best, guys, to break this down in a way that's simple, objective, non-biased, etc., try to just explain this so everybody can wrap their heads around it and experience it for the best of everybody's good. You got to really reflect it back through your own life. And what I would recommend is truly use the gift of astrology. Follow along with your natal chart. Watch the transits. Watch the planets moving around your chart. And I'm going to draw this out for you guys because, you know, I can say this, but some of us are visual. Maybe I've never seen this before. But let's say that you were a Scorpio. So uh, if you had a transit chart, you may have something that looks like the sun in Scorpio. And, you know, you might have your Mercury in Scorpio written in the chart as well. You know, the things might be in different places. Let's say you had your Venus in Scorpio. 
And uh, then you would have like a double wheel. You know, you could watch the planets move around the wheel. You could watch the planets talk to your planets. That's the beginning of cycles and phases. And that really matters. When we talk about the conversation of everybody being on their own time, everybody having their own clock, that's what I'm talking about. So without further ado, let's get to it, guys. This has a really like a, a two-part video, or at least this is the, the rudimentary part that we'd like to start with. The degree breakdown. This is the metaphysical weather forecast. Let's put it on blast. So you can follow along with your own chart and definitely look at your placements and see if that you have any placements following on these exact degrees or if they're making any major aspects to these degrees. Like for instance, uh, the, the sun is at seven degrees of Gemini today. So, you know, do you have any placements at seven Gemini or do you have any in seven degrees of mutable signs like Virgo, Pisces or Sagittarius. I had to think really hard about that shit. That's opposition, you know, because this may uh, this may be directly influencing you a little bit more specifically, like we we're talking about. But at this point, I digress a little bit. So the moon today is at 10 degrees of Aquarius. We've got Mercury at 19 Taurus. We've got Venus at five degrees of Gemini. Jupiter is at zero degrees of Gemini, just beginning its journey. Saturn is at 18 Pisces. You're going to see Uranus at 23 Taurus, one of the last minutes. You got Neptune at 29 Pisces, Pluto at one degree of Aquarius going retrograde. The North Node is at 13 degrees of Aries. And you've got Chiron at 22 degrees of Aries. And I really think I skipped Mars because I think... Uh, if I skip Mars, that's 21 degrees. How the hell are you going to skip Mars on Mars Day with Mark? <clears throat> I'm going to have to rewatch it. At least I caught it. If I didn't skip it, I'm tripping. But next week, June 4th, we're going to see the sun move up to 14 degrees of Gemini. The sun moves about one degree every week, okay? You've got the moon at 20, or 19 Taurus moving into the new phase. That's that last waning, waning crescent. We're about to start over. You've got Mercury moving to two degrees of Gemini. Venus moves to 14 in conjunction with the sun. So we actually end the week with a Kazemi. That's a very beautiful thing. We'll talk about that very soon. And then we've got Mars moving to 26 Aries. We've got Jupiter at two degrees of Gemini. Saturn moves up just a few minutes back at 18. The very last couple minutes, you've got Uranus moving to 24. Neptune to 29 still. Pluto is still inching its way along. And I will say that uh, we're about a month away from seeing Black Moon Lilith move into the sign of Libra. And that's a beautiful transition, guys. We're ready for this shit, man. We're ready for deeper peace, deeper release, because there's been some heavy earthing, heavy grounding going on in the world lately. So let's take it from the top and talk about the cycle, guys. Uh, broadly speaking, the moon is waning this week. So that's just going to say that as far as our day-to-day -day rhythms and adjustments go, we're really in this cycle of release and letting go and, you know, letting things move from your life. Addition by subtraction. Addition by subtraction. What I mean by that is removing certain things from your life to inadvertently improve your life. Gemini is going to present us with a whole host of things and ideas and new stimuli and what the fuck? So what you're going to want to do is just think about what could you simplify within your life? How could you make all the fun better? What things interrupt you? What things get in your way? And can you do without them? All right. So that's the theme of the week. And really a new beginning is coming. I would say a couple of days after that, you know, that'll be a conversation for next week. But we will see that new moon in Gemini on the 6th of june so get excited guys a new beginning let's talk about the sun in gemini guys what this really talks about is in my opinion the spirit of fun the sun itself is going to really reflect life it is because of the sun's energy that all of us exist in this form without the sun there would be no daytime there would be no plant life there would be no animal life. There would be no human life without the sun. We all know this, but it's a fact that's overlooked a little bit. And I'm telling you guys, as above, so below. So within, so without the principle of correspondence, that principle will also show you that whatever the 
celestial body is, does, looks like, operates like, will also show you what it's going to play out like in astrology. This is how you understand this archetypal symbolism and language. So with the sun, that's life. That's energy itself. That's the center of the solar system. So similarly, in an astrology chart, you'll know that your sun is the center of your solar system. That's going to be how you identify yourself, who you think you are, the ego. But when you watch the sun transit through the sky, that's more so going to speak to how we interact with life. The type of energy we receive as a planet. And if you really think about it physically, check this out, y'all. When you're looking at the chart, just understand this, guys, that the middle of the chart is where we are on Earth. So you're going to be looking at the sun like that. And if you were to look through the sun, don't do that, you would see Gemini. So wait a little bit <laughs> for the sun to move away, and then you can look at Gemini. But just trust and believe. And you can actually use night sky, like a Google sky or whatever. Just don't stare at the sun for the love of God, but do look at the stars and do understand that this is really real life and you can verify it. How crazy is it that we didn't always have these apps to do this shit? You used to need a map and a protractor and like graphite or a quill to do this shit. Like, damn, we are really lucky. So Gemini is how we're interacting with this life shit right now. And what does that mean, guys? So Gemini is a dual sign. And if you think about the Zodiac, they got, they got a lot of symbols. And those symbols deeply reflect the meaning of these energies. And I could tell you Gemini is mutable air and ruled by Mercury. But I would really like to tell you that it's symbolized by the twins. And you know what twins are. You might have, you might be a twin. You might have twin siblings. Or, you know, you might have uh, two cats or two dogs or two parrots. And they look like each other, you know. They're from the same mother. There's the same litter, you know, and that phenomenon is crazy. You can see that the sign itself, the glyph does look like the Roman numeral for two. So that's pretty cool as well. But just think about the uh, experience you would have as a twin, being able to interact with another person outside of you, especially if you were born at the same age, which is really what twin is. You would grow up together. You would experience life together. And then you would have this reference of I'm me, this is them. And this phenomenon is life, by the way, guys. Let me be very clear. All of us have this, even if we're only children. When you have the experience of perspective, which is something you're having right now, perceiving phenomenal reality, communicating, receiving messages, mercury energy, third house. That's what this shit is about. Like, AKA, the world is your twin. You know, there's you and then there's the world. This is interaction, basically. And the Zodiac is a story. This is how consciousness unfolds. It's like a whole picture, right? So Aries is just the beginning, existence itself, prop, raw primal awareness. You get me? I am. And then Taurus is more so like sustaining, maintaining, grounding, embodying. I have. <clears throat> and then Gemini is about after having and grounding, I think. You know, I can see things. I can interact. I can perceive mantras are a cool thing some people say uh Sagittarius would say I see but you know there's polarity right there how cool is that so what's this mean guys all this fucking words all this bullshit nonsense what the hell is he talking about hey this is the spirit of Gemini and you're gonna need some Gemini in your life so it'd be very smart for you to figure out what house you need Gemini in or which one it is, I should say, like which transit, because that's going to show which part of your life is being lit up. Like if it's a Gemini rising, you'll be paying more attention to you personally. If you're a Gemini 10th house, you'll be paying attention to your career, 7th house relationships, etc. But the whole point of this, guys, is interact with the world. Be willing to change, get some variety in your life. Inadvertently, you're probably seeking this out already, but this is just saying communication is key. How do we communicate with the world? This is going to be the focus. This is going to be what we're doing right now. And do understand that, well, the sun is in Gemini. We've got Venus in Gemini. We've got Jupiter in Gemini. There's a whole Gemini stellium, guys. And there's so much to say about this. Basically, you're going to need Gemini personally. You're going to need it to feel fulfilled on the inside, to feel happy, and to find deep meaning in the world. That's Sun, Venus, 
Jupiter, respectively. respectively. And I want to draw your attention to one of the sun transits that we're going to be going through. Let me take away these arrows really quick. But do watch the sun. You see it's creeping over uh, Gemini. So we start at the 28th this week. We're going to end on the 14th, or the 4th, I should say. And that's going to put the sun at 14 Gemini. And just watch, guys, because the sun is going to be making a square to Saturn. We're going to be moving in about four degrees away from the square. So one, two, three, four days, five days, you know, if you track Saturn. This will be a conversation for next week, but I'm just trying to let you guys know this square is going to tighten up and you're going to notice just off the rip. Even from the beginning, this would happen. This would be something a lot of you guys were feeling last week as well, I should say, on that note. Because by whole sign definitions, the sun square Saturn happened the moment the sun went into Gemini, you know? But like I'm saying, it'll tighten up. Ten days, you're going to really feel that pressure. So the important thing to note is that you got to be pressure. You got to be positive. You got to be interactive in this life. Don't be so rigid, Okay. This is a little bit of a stretch, but we're going to jump right to it, guys. Saturn is in Pisces, and this is really important. Moon is in Aquarius today, so let me just get to the real shit, guys, because that's how I'm feeling today, and, and that's just really what the conversation is, is that when you watch the transit of all these planets, you can only really see seven of these with your eyes if you count the sun and the moon, and that's going to be Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter, and Saturn, okay? Saturn being the last one. Everything else you're going to need a telescope for it or a lot of math. So basically, Saturn represents how we see the world. It's the objective reality. This was even a conversation when it came to Gemini. Gemini itself is the phenomenon of perception. Perception and reality are not the same thing, okay? We do talk about perception being reality. I want you guys to think about like the way the zodiac works. Gemini and Saturn are in conjunct. Saturn, the ruling sign of Capricorn. Or I'm sorry. Gemini and Capricorn are in conjunct. And Saturn is the ruling sign of Capricorn. Saturn represents reality. Gemini represents perception. It's very easy to trust our perceptions or to think that because we perceive something, that something is fucking real, right? It's not always that way. And this is one of the most confusing things in the world. Truly. And that's what this shit talks about. And then also, you know, you can see the other in conjunction hits the Scorpio side. And if you guys look at the natural in conjunctions in the Zodiac, you're going to see a lot of shit. If you guys don't understand what I'm saying, listen to Simplified Astrology. It's my free book that breaks this shit down. If you're more of a video person, definitely join the course, Simplified Astrology. And I wanted to say, because I've been mentioning this a lot, guys, I should have said this at the beginning. But if you guys feel called to get coaching, one-on-one -on -one help with your chart, or you want me to read your chart privately, my books are open. So I do have options for you guys there as well when it comes to like learning this at a more expedited rate. And internalizing it, okay? The sun is going square to Saturn, guys. So really, it's about character development. That's going to be a really relevant conversation, guys. You'll never escape this. And what's a really important thing to note is that anywhere you go, you're going to be there. Okay? Anywhere you go, you're going to be there. Wherever you go, there you are. So what I mean, guys, is that it's definitely worth your time to invest in yourself. It's worth your time to develop yourself. It's actually not worth it to not do it. You inadvertently improve every aspect of your life by putting into you, right? And honestly, that's what a lot of people are needing more than anything. There's a lot of things that people need, you know, help and resources, et cetera, to better their life. But I really feel that a lot of people do have the resources and they do have the strategies and the knowledge. And, you know, a lot of people just simply, and I've seen this in my years as a coach interacting with people, a lot of people just need recognition. They need attention and love. And these are genuine needs and people need respect as well. And that's what this Sun Saturn conversation really is about, y'all. So really, it's about rising above the need for self-pity, to be empathic, to pity yourself if you need to. But don't just inadvertently create your bullshit again and again because of the indolence or laziness or inertia. Getting stuck in those emotions and patterns, you know, you got to got to show up and move forward. And really, self-respect comes through discipline. If you really think about it, you know, the only way that you become to love and 
trust and, and value and respect yourself is by pouring into you. You know, because we, most of us, I would assume, know that self-esteem and self-love and all these things are great, but it's like, how do we really attain them? Fuck, how do we get this? Can I just go to fucking Walmart and buy one? Are you shitting me? Can I buy two? No amount of money can afford this gift for you, dude. It's bought with time and effort and attention and consistency. And what you're going to find with this one, man, is that like, I know I'm speaking through my personal subjective filters, right? But this sun, and I'm a sun square Saturn person. Every day of my life, I was born with this shit in my natal chart. So it's just like, this is the only thing I can really perceive from this right now, y'all, is that like, be loving and be kind to yourself and really pour into you guys because this world is deep. You can really get washed away from yourself. So develop yourself and let your routines, let that become grounding for you. The trait of consistency is one of the most beautiful meta skills that you can build just being consistent because this will help every aspect of your life guys to learn how to work and develop you should always be pouring into you more than anything else because then you have more to give and that is rewarding and this is what i'm saying guys the saturn pisces this is the need to connect the need to be involved the need to love but also on some level to be by ourselves Creating this balance between our personal and public lives, that's really, you know, a work of art and a work of science, if you really think about it. And everybody's got to stay in the lab and really think about it. And there is co-creation with the universe involved with that, too. So, I really think, as I'm taking in the full chart, guys, it would be best and very wise if we all just slowed down a little bit. Because... Jupiter is in Gemini. So I want to focus on this conversation and we can kind of work into the ingresses because you guys basically get the sun square Saturn thing. I don't got to beat that horse anymore, but just uh, watch this stuff, man. You know, the sun is basically going to move uh, parallel to Venus all week too. So that's a beautiful thing, guys. This is about appreciating life and just bringing more love in, loving yourself, self-love. You know, I said this earlier, almost like a Freudian slip, but no, Venus conjunct to the sun is like Venus Leo energy, even though it is in Gemini, which is going to just highlight a need for communication, to interact, to speak, find your voice and love it too. Remember that? Somebody heard that and, and really internalized it already, so I didn't have to repeat it, but I love you guys, man. And I hope that you can feel it through the words because that's what my Venus feels through this Gemini energy. The voice is such a powerful gift. And with Venus in Gemini, Mercury in Taurus, these two planets are in mutual reception. They've switched homes. So they're chilling. They're kicking back and they're having a good time. They support each other well right now. So you're going to find that the way that you're able to think right now is really advantageous. It's really helping you build. It's really helping you find peace and ground yourself and even, you know, work towards personal advancement right now. Things are making a lot of sense. <laughs> the, the reasoning is, is working and we're building guys and it's beautiful and we're making progress. I said it once. I'm going to say it again. The beautiful thing here, guys, things are making fucking sense. Yes, they are. Yeah. And if they're not, man, you probably have not spent enough time thinking and writing down your ideas. Like if things genuinely do not make sense to you, man, really write them down and come up with the questions you don't understand. Come up with the questions. And if you have the questions, you will probably seek the answer. And, and what I'm think I've learned I read this in a book about horary astrology. It was talking about why it works, basically. And this is a crazy phenomenon that has really shook my life to the core. And I see this in everything else, even that's not astrology. But the moment a question is formed, the answer already exists in the universe. Everything is energy. So formulating questions is such a powerful tool, guys. And I got a fuck ton of questions for y'all. Because I know I can really like help everybody connect with this, but I would take it a step further and say, who are you? And genuinely take some time to think about it. Like when, I, when I'm asking these questions, because I know sometimes I may throw some at you here and now, these ones really reflect for like 30 seconds. 
think about who you are, like who genuinely do you perceive yourself as? Get get aware of your self-image and self-concept for a second. All right, answer that question. Who am I? And then also I got a question. This one says, what, what do you want? <laughs> what do I want? What do I really want right now? And really take, some, take 30 seconds at least. Really go into your heart space and ask it. Or maybe go into your head space and ask it. And go into your feet and ask it for fuck's sake. Like, what do I really want? And then you could also ask, what do I really need? You know, and you guys see the wheels will start turning. You really start moving forward in your life just by asking questions about, you know, you and what you need. Because I think Gemini on some level can also rule distractions. So... I think we understand the Venus and Mercury discussion. Let me just tell you when Mercury moves, because somebody wants to know. Also, you're going to see on Friday, Mercury and Uranus going conjunct. So, like, there's going to be a liberation and a popping off, going off in the mind. And, and the mind is going to be stripped. There's going to be a breaking out of the matrix going on on Friday. So, like, hey, guys, if you're breaking down, if you're going crazy, just understand you're breaking the fuck through. So, hang in there, man. <clears throat> Pardon me. Confirmation, Bert, because this is really about to get really good. But I just know that mental health is such a fucking issue right now with the way that Mercury is highlighted. That's why we're having these conversations, man, is that um, Jupiter doesn't fucking like to be in Gemini. Let me be very clear, guys. This shit sucks. <laughs> I'm going to be really positive and we're going to create the best life with this transit. We're going to leverage this for the highest stability. But I'm about to tell you guys for real objective reasons. These energies are difficult, all right? And this is subjective as well. But let me just say, here's where my reasoning comes from, guys. When Saturn transits through Pisces, we experience boundaries, obstacles, limitations, as well as an opportunity to learn and gain mastery of Jupiter's energy. Jupiter rules Pisces. And, uh, you know, also everything Pisces is, that whole phenomenon. You know, so also... What does that really mean? We already kind of had that discussion, but before we move into the second point, that's just going to say that, guys, like, with everybody feeling the spirit world so deep, Saturn Pisces, with everybody feeling their own emotions so unbridled, there's a tendency, and then this is Jupiter being stressed out again. This is a tendency to feel overwhelmed, to feel despondent, hopeless, lost, broken. You know, compassion fatigue is also an idea. When we have too much empathy, give too much, so much sacrifice, we can lose ourselves in that shit, man. That's Jupiter doing its extreme thing again, going overboard. So Saturn in Pisces has already put Jupiter through some fucking stress, guys. But now we got Jupiter in Gemini. And this is good, by the way. There's nothing bad that ever fucking happens to us. Really, nothing happens to us. These things just motherfucking be happening. And it's up to us to derive meaning. And that's kind of what uh, my Jupiter says. But let me just say this, guys. Jupiter and Gemini says, like, the ideas are going to carry meaning. And that's just my dumbass idea. I hope you can build off of it. But don't even think that I'm right for a second. Apply this shit to your own life or perceive your own life and question if that shit applies. You feel me? The latter would be more responsible. Jupiter is how we learn. It's how we expand. And on some level, this deep expansive energy is going to give us the faith that life has and the optimism that we experience in general. This is our willingness to push forward. This is the purpose that dwells within all of us, guys, for real. It's like the driving force. I know we mentioned the sun being life itself, and it's like the sun is going to rise and fall every single day, by the way. But I'm talking about like the spirit. That's Jupiter. You feel me? That shit is Jupiter the higher power, the divinity. The sun is as divine as it gets, but you should see what I'm saying at this point. And this is also the reason why Jupiter exalts in motherfucking Leo, right? Think about it. Yeah. And it would fall in where? Aquarius. Same thing with Capricorn. So just understand when Jupiter is transiting anywhere near Gemini, Virgo, or Capricorn, Jupiter is going to get a little bit stressed the fuck out because Jupiter is all about having faith, finding meaning in life and really seeing the higher order of things. So now Jupiter is posed in this position where it has to find understanding of all these ideas and all the perspectives and every fucking idea and, and monkey ass thought form that floats through your primate brain, dude. You know, 
not everything's that fucking deep, man. That's what it's about. This is the literal definition of getting on your nerves. But also you kind of see with Jupiter, there's this unconscious growth factor that everybody experiences. So there will be a true need to create more and to communicate more and to share more. And I'm blessed at times like this to have a podcast that I've been doing for so many fucking weeks to be able to yap and yap and yap. But that's just what people need, man, is like someone to fucking talk to, to be able to express their ideas and to get shit out and to be able to really see things from a higher perspective. So counseling, therapy, a fucking journal, podcasting, man, that's really uh, one of the most Jupiter Gemini phenomenons. Sharing your voice, man. And really thinking about the messages. There's a, there's so many. And think about this, guys. The further you get from the sun, the more cultural and transpersonal the planet is going to be. And the more slowly it's going to orbit the sun. So, like, the further we get around here, the more discussions we can have about just plethoras of things. And, and with astrology reflecting life and not even being the causal factor of it, really. It's debatable if it is or not, but I'm going to go as far as to say that astrology just reflects life. It doesn't really cause it because at the end of the day, we don't have the ability to make any causal effects on these planets. So it's like it's kind of unworth the time, in my opinion, to consider that these planets impel and compel and create things in your life. They may be indicative of the events and circumstances that we experience, but I don't believe that... Uh, these motherfuckers be causing shit. I really believe humans and nature do. And these may be one element of nature, but that's far out, man. So, and I'm an astrologer telling you this shit. So uh, let me just say that for a lot of people, and by the way, Jupiter takes a year to move through every zodiac sign. So we got about one year of this Jupiter fucking Gemini transit of us expanding through our own nerves, getting on our own fucking nerves. Uh, that's deep meaning that we're going to derive from life. We're going to really have an organized thought pattern at the end of it. Psychic development was the conversation I was attempting to initiate with those last couple phrases. If I'm just being honest, psychic development. So pay attention. See how you see things. At the end of the week, we will have Mercury conjunct to Jupiter. And really, that's the whole theme of Jupiter and Gemini. I think we've covered, covered this a couple times, but Mercury literally ruling over Jupiter just says that we have to try to find the deep meaning with our left brain, with our intellect. And that's actually a beautiful thing. Every single day, we will do this probably multiple times within the span of five minutes even. This is a normal phenomenon people do experience, but I'm just saying that this is going to be more of a, a theme. So within this whole year, I would like to see everybody have a better understanding of the way that their mind works and how they communicate and be more proficient in getting their ideas out and as well as receiving to be a better listener. And to listen without judgment or reaction. Or a need to respond even, okay? And I got another conversation. Let's talk about Mars. And then I think I'm going to sign this out, guys. Because I don't need to take off too much of your time. Because I kind of low-key felt like I was getting into that Eight of Swords energy with that Jupiter Gemini for a second. But let's talk about Mars this week. Mars Day with Mark. And I'm going to leave you off on the good stuff, guys. Your life is exactly what the fuck you make it. It's nothing more, nothing less. The stars may impel. They're not going to compel. You know, these might be the vibrations, but ultimately this is the energy. What you do with it is what you do with it. There's a lot of people that have never known about astrology and it made no difference on their lives. You get me? So I'm grateful to have your attention that we see a higher order of things and we use this for direction. So the North Node is in Aries, Saturn is in Pisces, and we've got Gemini Sun and Gemini Jupiter, all lots of things, man. And Pluto is in the spirit of Aquarius. So really, all that shit says, follow me here, guys. The human vibration, the collective, the collective vibration is ascending. It's raising in frequency. Humans are evolving. Evolution really is the only solution. 
Some people debate this phenomenon's existence. And while they're debating, I encourage you to get with the fucking program, man. What does that mean? Superior conduct. Be the best of the best. This doesn't mean be egotistical and compete with other people. I'm talking about be your very best self. At the end of the day, you're the only you you're going to have. So it's actually not worth our time to look at others as our competition. We're only in competition with ourselves, with choosing to better ourselves. Superior means better. So just understand, guys, without morals, principles, or guidelines, you will lack the clarity, the, discert, the, the discernment, and the decisiveness to make the right decisions. And often you'll be wasting time thinking when you should be advancing. So you need to have guidelines to better yourself. And you just got to understand superior conduct is the only way. Evolution is the only solution. Self-mastery is the only success. So be intentional with your life and everything in your intentions will be manifested. But you have to be able to reconcile the paradox of desires. We have separating and we have unity, unifying desires. Pardon me. Unifying and separating desires. Two types of desires that originate from everybody's souls. And this is a deeper conversation for Pluto and Aquarius. But I'm telling you guys, you have to really try to be your best and highest self. And consider, what is the best choice? That's what Mars is about. Mars rules the North Node. Mars is conjunct Chiron right now. There's a lot of Mars energy being the focus right now. The best choice is the one that helps the most people and harms the least, guys. So we have to, we have to suspend our reaction time in this life a little bit, guys. Because Aries is home for Mars. So I think everybody's feeling, I sure hope everybody's feeling alive at this point and feeling powerful. You know, there is a conversation with Chiron here about the trauma healing and letting go of the past and maybe having, you know, issues working with our vital force as we are moving through this. I wish everybody more power, strength, and peace. But ultimately, Aries represents a natural phenomenon of existence, cardinal fire, the becoming of life. You get me? So Mars here, the planet of action and intention and direction, is really just about unfolding existence as it should be. So you're going to see impulsivity being a key theme in everybody's life. So all you got to do, man, is be a fucking human. Think before you fucking act. Think before you fucking act, y'all. Don't mistake my passion for aggression. I love y'all. And I just, I love the work so much but let me talk about this i'm gonna be really real get into my subjective whatever the fuck but also be as clear as i can and, and neutral as i bring it into this conversation into this circle right here mars chiron aries is your identity on some level who you perceive yourself to be the first house the face you know when you think about your name the one written on your driver's license or your birth certificate they identify you by the face next to that picture right so there's something to be said about Aries and the name and the identity that you hold, all right? And when it comes to Chiron and Aries, for as long as it's going to be there, it'll be there for a couple more years. I can't remember exactly how long it stays in that elliptical transit, but Chiron and Aries reflects that we need to kind of heal. Fuck the kind of, we need to heal and grow in self-awareness and self-concept. What the fuck does that mean, Mark? Let me tell you what that means. That means that a lot of people are suffering immensely because of a sad, broken, or dejected view of themselves. And here's what's even more fucked up, y'all. Well, it's not always readily obvious. We create our self-image. Nobody else. Just us. A lot of us are kind of unaware that we have a self-image. Even more that we've created it for ourselves. So this is where the integration comes through. This is where the healing comes through. Who the hell do you think you are? Who the heavens do you think you are? I choose you. I choose you. That sounds like some Pokemon shit. I challenge you. <laughs> and I challenge myself, man. See yourself positively. Is it possible that you're an amazing person? That you're a beautiful person? That you're a winner? And what I noticed recently in my life by evoking my self-image, by being able to step outside of myself and look at myself from my imagination, I was able to perceive different dynamics of my unconscious just by the way I chose to perceive myself. And that was a trip. And I really realized I've been talking about this shit all year. 
but Chiron is in fucking Aries. And I think I just understood what that meant. I know I've been saying this for a year, y'all, but I just saw it today. Holy fucking shit. It's probably because Mars is right up here. This is saying, guys, get very clear about who you think you are. Like, I would really recommend you take Sundays. Put a reminder on your phone recurring every Sunday. Focus on yourself. Think about yourself. Who am I? And really challenge yourself to affirm positive things. And beyond what you say, be about that action, guys. This is the point of this conversation is that your thoughts don't create your reality, guys. Your manifestations do. All right? And thought is only one quarter of manifestation. You have to have intentions. You have to have thoughts. You have to have feelings. You have to have embodiment. Fire, water, air, and earth. Irrespectively. But that's the point. A lot of people are just broken, airheaded dummies that really don't do anything to improve their circumstances. But they're smart as hell. They're living in that reality. They could give you all the excuses or reframe reality as to why what they're doing is the thing to do. And they're living in alignment. But their life is fucking broken. They're broke as hell. Broke is a joke. Ain't got no money. It's not funny. And their love life sucks. They're not receiving love. They're lonely as fuck. They're not funny. They're not balling. They ain't got no swag. Ain't got no bitches. Can't kick flip. Can't dance. Hips all broken. Uh, Not broken, but crunchy as fuck. Can't even dance. Like, it's just bullshit, bro. Inferior existence caused by inferior conduct, bro. And motherfuckers think their thoughts create the reality. Bullshit. My Saturn Taurus had enough of this shit, man. I'm about to cry. I'm about to leave and I'm about to uh, <laughs> wish you guys the best. <sighs> it's okay, Mark. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Sometimes you got to console yourself, y'all. You see what I'm saying? And, uh... <laughs> oh, man. I just don't want to be somebody I can't respect, y'all. So that's where that comes from. Is just do your best, man. And be around winners. Not everybody wants to do their best in this life. And I'm not trying to be needlessly divisive and artificially separate us from anybody. But I will just say, man, that um, some people don't want to get better. And I've really seen this in my life. And uh, that's okay. Because we ain't got no time for it. We stay committed to the mission. And we we identify this energy fast. And we just keep on stepping. Your purpose is your purpose, guys. So I want to elaborate because I think I got pulled into the Chiron Mars thing. But I do want to say a little something about the North Node. As I was talking about that action, I got kind of, I really got, I don't want to think I, I got off track, but dude, I really got into something. I don't know what the fuck just happened, really. But uh, <laughs> that's why I love doing this unscripted sometimes. I think I might be a little bit over the time where we might be pushing on one hour. So let's get it. Let's wrap this up, y'all. And just understand that um, Chiron and Mars could reflect sexual healing in addition to the self-image and the vitality and if you really think about self-image that says a lot about the standards you hold yourself to guys because for you to think that you are something your physical world would need to support it guys because like i use money as an example a lot of times because it's super easy to use guys let's say that you want to be a millionaire you ever seen the show who wants to be a millionaire i do what if you thought well fuck yeah i want to be a millionaire so let me manifest a million dollars let me manifest being a millionaire let me start saying the thoughts of a millionaire i'm a millionaire wow i'm a millionaire there you go okay right on so how that how far did that get you <laughs> you know what i mean like close your eyes see yourself it's like do you see yourself having a million dollars well maybe you can get the fire in maybe you can see the the image maybe you can even feel like a million dollars maybe you even got the water into it and it just it feels amazing and you're emotionally connected to it, but is the uh, is the earth there? So here's the thing. If the earth wasn't there because you hadn't yet manifested it, time hadn't given you that circumstance yet, what you need to do is start using your time. Because here's the thing, guys. The key right here. I hope you receive the fucking key. Time and energy are inextricably linked. Whenever time is spent, energy will also be spent. Time is constantly being expended. Never in your life will you not expend time. And at the same time that you're expending time, you will also be expending energy. So it's fundamentally a misuse of one's time and energy that results in the lack of one's desire or the desire being unfulfilled. So 
it just depends on what you want. Again, millionaire is something everybody can think about and like, okay, I would just say that it's more uncommon to not be a millionaire than to be a millionaire. If you look at the actual statistics of just how people live, unless you live in like Zimbabwe or whatever the fuck, depends on the currency. But you guys like probably understand the dollar. And I hope somebody listening to this can even just fuck around and and use whatever they want to manifest more than money. Because that's the whole point of manifesting money. I digress. And I really don't. That's super important. But let's keep going. If the physical world doesn't back it up, man, you start taking the physical actions that make it happen, guys. So it's like, I will be a millionaire. You guys know this. But how am I going to do that? By taking the actions every day that moves me towards it. You get me? Because I can look at my fucking self-image, identify as this shit, and just not see it in the physical world. So then what am I about to do? Increase my income. Increase my net worth. Remove my expenses. Remove liabilities. You get me? Live below my means. Invest my money, etc. Help more people. Grow my business, etc. You get me? And then boom, it's inevitable. It's the same way you manifest everything, man. This is how I manifested my soulmate. This is how I manifested the love in my life. This is how I manifested my team. As I just started living that way, I started operating that way, self-concept, identity, vision, idea, emotion, and then action aligned. Fire, water, air, and earth, man. Simplified magic coming soon. So stay tuned. Hope you guys enjoyed this message because truly you need to look at your own chart. So if you guys haven't gotten a reading yet and you're on the fence, definitely do it now while I've got the special going on for Venus and Gemini. Get a reading or do it at your own pace. Simplified astrology. Change the life, guys. You got to know where your north node is because the focus right now is the north node. It'll always be the focus, but especially when Mars is the ruler of the north node, is really about getting on your purpose, knowing who you are and where the fuck you are going. Ultimately, you hold the brush. You got the canvas. It's you to create this shit, but you better be looking for some objective certainty. And that's what astrology can actually give you when it comes to your life personally. I enjoy doing these breakdowns, but I know there's a big barrier between me and y'all. So I try to direct you towards the water because I can't drink it for you. And also, I can't even really pull everybody to these individual pools because I'm trying to make this a collective pool thing, too. So I hope that this helped us hydrate and nourish our spirits, gang. Fuck the bullshit. Get focused. What do we got to eliminate to get better, gang? And where do we need to be consistent? That's what I'm thinking. And what questions should we be asking? I hope you guys enjoyed this, man. Leave some interaction down there for you, boy. I appreciate you guys. In the spirit of Gemini, talk to me. I love y'all. Take it easy. Blessed be. Oh, I'm just going to sit here at the very end. No, you hang up first.